Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara's at work, and today we are reviewing the infamous Code 4 by Cold Steel. The Cold Steel Code 4 in CTS XHP steel and aluminum handles. This thing is it's a pretty awesome knife, but like most knives, I do have a couple complaints. So let's get into the good and bad of this review. First up, I want to thank the, the homie Timbo for sending me this knife and also gifting me a knife. What an amazing guy. He's been supporting us since we first started this channel. And um, we can't thank him enough. Awesome friend. And yeah, just an all around cool dude. And yeah, thank you for sending me um, a, bunch of, a bunch of knives to check out. I really appreciate it. So let's get into this knife now. Jeez, you guys are like, hurry up, right? So... So the overall length is basically um, 8.6 inches. So it's a, just a tiny bit over 8.5 inches. The blade length is basically 3 and 5 eighths, which is just a smidgen over 3.5 inches. Um, a great EDC size for a full-size knife. It is very thin, though. So very lean in the hand or in the pocket. For such a full size knife. This one is the clip point version with a beautiful hollow ground blade. Love it, love it, love it. Pretty acute tip. So, for a clip point blade, I like that the tip doesn't go up too high like how some clip points do. This one's pretty nice. You can still use the tip pretty easily. I prefer normally my tips to go down just a tiny bit more, but this one's pretty decent. And then you can see the strength right here in this uh, this groove right here on the tip where it adds a little strength to the sides of the blade, which is really nice. So you get a pretty decently strong tip yet good enough to use. And it's very slicey. The blade stock thickness is, you know, pretty much right in a good zone. It's not like overly thick, but it's not really thin either. The thinness behind the edge is about 15 thousandths behind the edge. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Slices, so good. This thing cuts very, very nice. They did give you a little sharpening notch right there that works just fine. It is uh, past the plunge grind because the plunge grind is basically right here lined up with this. So they wind up giving you a great cutting length as well. Um, I did sharpen this. I did use this and yeah, sharpened up really nicely. CTS XPHP is a great, great steel it does have a belt satin that can take a little bit of fingerprints, but beautiful belt satin finish. Very, very nice. And then it does have a beautiful mirror edge on it. It did sharpen up. Great. <laughs> it's very, very sharp. Um, so you can see right here, because this is a back lock or the triad lock. Slow down, guys. I hear you guys screaming in the comments now. It's not a back lock. It's a triad lock. I'm just joking. Anyways, it's a triad lock back lock. And um, so you do have this little flat portion right here, which when you do get this little spot right here that you could use for your fingers when you're gripping it, we'll get to the ergos in one second. You can also use it for when you drop it right there to hit your finger. The ergos are... Mail call. So the ergos are really good in the hand to an extent. I mean, it is thin, right? It's not going to be like a Griptilian or a Spyderco Shaman or anything like that. Speaking of that, we didn't even do size comparisons. Let me just do that very quickly. I know some of you guys like that. Some of you guys don't. But here is the Spyderco Shaman. You can see it's about a half inch smaller. Here's the Benchmade Griptilian, basically the same size as the Shaman, but just in case if you know one and not the other. Here is the Hinderer XM18, 3.5 inch. You can see it is a little bit bigger than the Hinderer. Um, the Hinderer is basically the same size as the Shaman. Here is a good size comparison though. The Spyderco Manix 
2XL. You can see the Spyderco is just a little bit bigger than it. Now, the regular version would be basically the same size as the other knives I just pulled out. So, there's no reason for me to pull that out because you can just look at it as the same size as the last ones. Here is another Cold Steel. Here is the Cold Steel American Lawman, um, which is a little bit smaller. And then here is the Cold Steel uh, Ultimate Hunter, which is about um, the same size as it. You know what? The, the Ultimate Hunter is just a, a small bit smaller. The, the Code 4 is just a tiny, tiny bit longer. But there you guys go. Nice, large, slim EDC knife. So, back to the Ergos. It is slim in the hand, so that is a thing, you know, especially when you're squeezing. The one thing, the one benefit it has is it has a good depth here. So, you do have a good thickness right here. But when it comes to the thinness, you know, I mean... You get what you get. So I guess the one way they could they could fix that is by making bigger scales right here or contouring them. But since they are nice and flat, it's what makes it very slim. So, you know, you have benefits of it being very slim in the pocket and, um, you know, just being a nice, slim, lightweight knife um, to an extent. But it also, you know, makes it to where it could be a little bit more comfortable in the hand. But it does work really good because of this you know because of this thickness right here it does give you a couple finger placements in my hands work great um this little spot down here works so good in the hand i do feel the clip a tiny bit not that big of a deal the clip's not the deepest carry um and you see the lanyard hole right there i you know the clip works good so i'm not going to complain about it too much but i yeah it, it works um, let's get to the action. So, this is a triad lock, so it's not going to be a knife like with a detent. You know, it has the, the back lock, which basically pushes resistance right here. And once you break that, you know, you can um, continue to open it. But if you don't, it'll slap it back. The thumb studs are really good thumb studs. I do like them. They're a little bit bigger on one side than the other. But you basically get it, roll it around, and then... Love that sound. We'll get into the drop and the unlocking in one second. You can thumb flick it. Some people, I think, have a little bit of trouble thumb flicking these, especially, um, or not especially. Certain one, certain of the triad locks, back locks are a little harder than others. This one I find pretty smooth considering. I actually enjoy flicking this one. I can even reverse flick it. Um, it does take a lot more force, though, I'll tell you that, because you have resistance the whole way. It's not like um, other knives that have a detent, and once you break the detent, it just flies open. You have a pretty good resistance from here all the way to there. So you have to basically muscle it all the way to there before it'll really slap open. Now, unlocking it, you... Push this lock bar right here. Keep your finger nice tucked up tight to the top of this spot right there. And then this thing will smack your finger. And then you can close it. Now that's the way you can do it one-handed. I mean, obviously, you can just close it like that. But I like to one-hand open them. And you can also take it and you can just let it drop over its own weight. Or you can give it the little... Once you push the button, you can just like slap it forward a little bit and it'll slap and then you can slap down because once you get to that position, you know, the just like the resistance you had from opening it, that'll also help close it. You just got to get past that little spot right there. So it's not really drop shutty or anything, but once it passes that spot, it takes itself home. Very cool. Now the triad lock is known to be one of the strongest locking mechanisms out there, but I think it might have uh, some competition coming up, guys. And that's the shark lock. The shark lock, it, whew. I should have did a size comparison with the shark lock, huh? This is the AD20. They are the exact same length. I just now realized that, and I'm sorry. I did not pull this out before, but this is an incredibly strong locking mechanism. 
the review is coming soon. But I feel like um, there are a couple locks that are rivaling it. I don't know about the, the deadbolt lock that CRKT is making. And I don't know about the shark lock on which one is stronger. I do know, um, in my opinion, I feel like I know that it's stronger than the 8015 lock. Um, but supposedly as of right now, pound for pound, it is the strongest lock and it has not been beaten because it cannot be beaten until the other ones are tested. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like saying, um, you know, oh, so-and-so's got the record, but so-and-so's really fast. You know, um, you can't say that they're faster until they beat them. Right. So same thing with this. You know, you can't say that their strength beats the triad lock until they do the weight test. Anyways, so it is a very strong locking mechanism. It has three points of contact. So you see this very, very large stopping pin that I love. I absolutely love seeing big, thick stop pins like that. I'm talking about that part that's not moving right now. Right there, that pin. That's the stop pin. So when it opens up, you'll see this little channel right here. So... You see that channel right there? So this has basically a cutout right here, right there, that drops down into there. And then the back, this locks up. You see that little groove right there? It locks up on the stop pin. And then you have the, the back lock putting pressure in between the stop pin the um that groove and the blade and making three points of contact which is awesome and it is very strong even just by grabbing it and shaking it and messing with it and you know trying to get play but where it really does shine is with like the weight test i mean these things can hold a crazy amount of weight i forget what the exact weight is i know they're all a little different but it's a a high amount of weight your body weight's definitely not gonna break it for sure i mean in the lock i don't even think fails it's the blade that snaps so it's basically not even how much the triad lock can hold it's how much the damn blade can hold because it's you know the 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 lock is stronger than the blade itself um now so love a lot of things about this knife the sound i think is fantastic also it just has a nice, strong popping sound. I like that. I like that reassurance of that, that strong pop. Um, what are some bad things, though? Now, I do want to say that this comes in multiple different blade shapes, so it's not like this is the only blade shape. So if this isn't your blade shape, they do have a tanto. They have a drop point. Um, they, uh, I think they have one other blade shape. But anyways, the point is, is that, you know, you don't have to like this blade shape because they have multiple different blade shapes, which I think is amazing. I like the fact that they have a knife that you can pick your own blade shape on, um, and still have the same knife. So there are a lot of great things about this knife. This is an awesome knife. This is probably my favorite cold steel. Um, possibly. I haven't held them all, so I can't speak on that as of right now. It is my favorite though. Um, so what are some bad things? Get into it. I think the clip is ugly. I think the clip looks like crap. I don't like it. I think, um, they could have done way better. Does it work? Yes. Does it work good? Yes. So how much can I really complain? The next thing is, is they have this big old strong knife and then they have the little hardware. Can we get it? I'm out. The little hardware down here now they do have a big pivot which i think that's a t12 or t yeah i think it's a t12 let me see here oh, i'm pretty sure it's a t12 t12 or t15 anyways they have a big pivot which i like i love to see that that's awesome but why would you you know come on give us some t8s down there this is supposed to be a tough guy right um another thing is is this backspacer this does not line up you can see how, if it'll focus, come on, camera. Um, you see, I can, yeah, so not that big of a deal, but it does line up right here. So that's what's weird. Now, if it was all like that through the whole thing, I would just say that's the way it's supposed to be. But down here, it's flush, and then the higher you go, the more unflush it gets. Whatever. Um, not that big of a deal. Um I don't know what these this jimping is for. It doesn't do anything at all. Um, 
Yeah, my finger does land there sometimes. Usually it lands right here, either on top of this bump or right over it. But right here, there's no traction from that at all. So I guess it's just for looks. Not a big deal. The next thing, like I was saying before, in the hand, when I really squeeze it, you know, I mean, it is thin, but it's not that bad. It's not that big of a deal, but, you know, I, I do feel it, especially right here on these two fingers, but not that big of a deal, but I do feel it. Another thing, I really wish that they would have put the little dent right there that they do on some back locks is this one is very uncomfortable to unlock there's just it's a strong amount of force this back lock gives you a lot of you gotta push pretty hard to unlock it so i just wish they would have chamfered a little like a little finger spot there it would have made it so much more comfortable there are a lot of knives that do that and that would have made this action so much more pleasurable um, and it seems like it's pretty easy to do. Next thing, this is aluminum handles. It is going to scratch. That's a fact. I mean, um, eventually, you know, obviously you can get away with using it for quite some time because it, it actually is pretty durable. I've seen lots of aluminum knives that actually, um, they do shock me on how long they last with taking little scratches. But eventually they are going to scratch. It's aluminum. It's a softer material. And it's um, it's got a coating on it, so the coating is going to scratch. It just says, eventually. Um, you know, I guess depending on how you use it too. Um, this one is a little off centered, but not a big deal. Um, I'm sure it'll center right up. You know what? I'm not going to say that without centering it. So I couldn't really get it to go centered. I did not like try like really hard. I just turned the pivot and I put a little pressure on the blade and it's not going to center. It keeps wanting to sit over there. And then if I do get it really close to centered, I can't um, close it without uh, muscling it. So if you want decent action, whatever, not that big of a deal. It doesn't scrape or anything like that. It's fine. Um, lots of great things about this knife though, and very little bad. Um, and even the bad really isn't that bad. Um, yeah, just so many good things. I love the finish of the blade. I, even though it fingerprints a lot, that's another thing, man. This blade is very fingerprinty. Not that big of a deal. I mean, cause it's such a beautiful blade. So yeah, very beautiful. Um, very awesome knife, man. I, I like these things so much, but there you guys go. The code four by Cold Steel. Awesome knife. Peace.